Google Marketing Live has come and gone again for another year, and unless you're a Google Ads marketing nerd like me, you don't really care about all the updates because for you, what is more important is how is this going to affect your business? Are you going to be seeing more conversions or less conversions? Are CPCs going to increase? And more importantly, what do you need to change if you need to change anything inside of your current Google Ads account? And that's what we're going to be getting to the bottom to in this video. I will also include the a link in the description to the full hour and a half Google Marketing Live presentation if you do want to go through and watch that. Because as I said, in this video, I really want to focus on what you need to be taking notice of and what you need to be changing or thinking about changing inside of your Google Ads campaign. Now, the other reason why I wanted to release this video is for a very, very important reason because on the back of Google Marketing Live, your local friendly Google Ads rep will be equipped with new data points, which they will be throwing out to you and really using it as a reason for why you should make certain changes inside of your Google Ads account. Now, I'm not saying that these recommendations are necessarily bad, it's just that you do need to know the full picture of where this data is coming from and what is gonna be the best steps for your current Google Ads campaign. And I can pretty much guarantee that your Google Ads recommendations dashboard, your email, or your Google Ads rep will be throwing this one data point around how Google's new AI Max saw an increase in 27% conversions. Now, no one is doubting that when they ran their better tests that that's what happened. But I do just really wanna let you know that when a better test like that happens, generally what happens is they approach some larger type brands, they will then also go through and do a, what they call a marketing partnership. So Google Ads will actually pay for that marketing spend and then Google gets to share the data. So there's nothing wrong with that but what you do need to think about is that obviously, especially in these cases, those campaigns are running generally on budgets of more than $10,000 a month. And they're being used inside of accounts which have already got dialed in conversion tracking. They already have got really excellent CRO. They're generally more established brands that have a really strong brand presence. So what I would let just to give you a bit of an idea, especially when your Google rep does reach out with that statistic, because it is a really, really powerful statistic. What business wouldn't wanna see an increase of 27% conversions just by opting into AI Max. And this is the question that you need to ask back or, or refer back to your Google agent is, can you give me two or three case studies of businesses or brands that are spending around about the same amount of money as me and in the same niche. And if you can then get that data, that's gonna just allow you to really make some better decisions as to whether these changes are for you. Now, as part of Google Marketing Live, they also do do a lot of updates about AI Max and also about the Performance Max reporting dashboards, which are now available. Now, because I've released individual videos about channel performance inside of Performance Max and also the new AI Max feature for search campaigns, I'm not gonna to speak too much about those inside of this video, but if if you follow to the end of the video, I'll show you where you can watch those full videos which I've already released. And of course, it also goes without saying that everything we're gonna talk about now, if you don't have a very solid optimization strategy for how to optimize your Google Ads campaigns, using any of these features are not gonna make any difference. So if you want the latest strategy which I've updated to incorporate all these changes on how to correctly optimize your Google Ads campaigns, I want you to follow the link in the description below so you can get access to my updated Google Ads optimization checklist. Now, before I get into the two core takeaway messages that I believe every business owner really needs to get a handle of when they are going through and reviewing their Google Ads accounts, I wanna take you through what was, I think, the main theme of Google Marketing Live, which was, was a tagline that they released at the start of the presentation, which was our AI advantage is your business advantage. Now, I will say for the last couple of Google Marketing Lives, the different things that they've been released have very much been kind of something that they had hoped AI would get to. But this year did really mark a bit of a change where we are starting to see that user behavior really change. So what Google has been talking about for a couple of years now, I think is a lot more important this year, and it's definitely something that businesses need to take real attention for. Previous years, I would say that as a business owner or a Google marketer, you could just sit back and watch, whereas now I really think things have started to change gear, where you do need to put some practical things in place, otherwise you will be left behind pretty quickly. And the other big thing to really take note of is this whole AI war that's been 
going through Gemini, going through ChatGPT, Complexity, all of these different tools which people are using is that Google has kind of finally got this right. They did have a couple of missteps when they first launched. We don't want to talk about BARD, but when they launched BARD, but now with Gemini and Gemini 2.5, they're actually leading across the core metrics of AI. And this wasn't actually Google's own marketing spin, because if you look at their web dev leaderboard, they've got Gemini 2.0 winning across all of the core metrics that we look at for what's important about AI. So it is really, really important to note that the AI model, which is underneath the hood or operating Google's AI campaigns, is actually the market leader at the moment. So this is where Google really did present from that point of strength. They do know now that they have the strongest AI model that is operating on the market today. And they've really just thrown that through right at the start to, you know, so that people can just expect that because of AI is getting used inside of the Google Ads campaigns and it's the best AI model, that that should automatically mean and lead to lower acquisition costs and better conversion rates. But I do really, really want to stress, although the AI that is operating within Google Ads is campaigns, it's really, really impressive and really, really powerful. Google Ads is still not a set and forget campaign. You don't just set it up and let Google do its job as much as that's the message that Google is trying to give you. As I said, remember, regardless of how strong the AI is working inside of Google Ads, which it is super, super impressive, if you don't have these core fundamentals of a really good offer, a really good landing page, you've got a really good account structure, you're still not going to be able to see the success. And what a real success is with Google Ads right now is creating creating the right structure, which then allows AI to do its most powerful work. And I know this could be a really harsh way of kind of saying it, but it's kind of really looking at that what you're trying to do with your Google Ads campaign, your Google Ads structure, and your Google Ads optimizations is to feed in the right prompts so that Google's AI can go do its job, which is to get you more conversions at the lowest possible price. And that's why I said before that it's really, really important that you do use a really solid optimization strategy. Once again, if you want to get that checklist, just follow that link in the description below. But right Right now, let's get into the two core key takeaways. Now, once again, before I get into these two core key takeaways, remember that this is not all of the announcements I'm really just summarizing, which I think are the two important ones that will be continually recommended to you by your Google Ads reps. So I really just want to equip you into how to correctly use these and whether it's worthwhile for you. And the first thing which I can guarantee, which is coming to a Google generated email, Google Ads dashboard, or from your Google rep is what they're calling the power pack. If you follow Google Marketing Live last Last year, you would know that they released this thing called the Power Pair, which was using Performance Max and search campaigns together. Well, this year they've updated it to the Power Pack. Now, I understand the power of a marketing tagline in marketing, but I don't really love this whole Power Pack, Power Pair thing but that's just something for another day. Firstly, let's get into what is the Power Pack which Google is talking about. And that's when inside of an account, you're combining Performance Max along with AI Max for your search campaigns and then Demand Gen. So it's essentially using Performance Max a search campaign with AI Max enabled and then also demand gen. And essentially what they're looking at here is that you're uh, really looking at targeting people all the way from you know initial discovery through to them completing a search. Now, if you go through and watch the full story of Google Marketing Live, you will see that this was really built on, on a really lot of important data, which may surprise some people. And one of the main ones being that the largest growth area in terms of generations for using Google search is actually Gen Z. So. What a lot of people were surprised to hear that the 18 to 24 age bracket was actually the fastest growing and the largest users of the Google search network. And this really flies in the face of what a lot of people have been you know, trying to predict is that these chat GPT models are really gonna mean the death of search. When in reality, it's the death of the way that people used to search. People are still using Google search, it's just becoming a lot more conversational. Now, if you followed my channel for any length of time, you would know that over the last 12 months, I've really started to really talk about what I call the bottom up funnel, where you build your campaign based on search, or search and shopping if you are an e-commerce brand. And then once you've got success with those search and or search and shopping campaigns, you start to scale those campaigns and you can do that through two ways. You're either increasing your budget or you're starting to reach out to colder traffic and you're reaching out to colder traffic in quite a number of different ways where you are going for newer search themes. So not your high intense search themes. So you are using you know Performance Max to target only for new customers or you could use an AI Max type campaign. It used to be dynamic search. And then you're also reaching 
out to newer networks. So video, display, and that's where YouTube and obviously demand gen comes into play. So this very much does fit in line with what I've been talking about, but I wouldn't go through the rollout which Google was really recommending, which was really taking your current search campaigns and just quickly switching them over and opting into AI Max. Especially if you've worked really, really hard on getting high converting search campaigns, I still think the best way of incorporating AI Max if you want to test it is to throw it into a different campaign. Add in your current high performing search terms as negative keywords so you're really blocking it out so it's not taking over that search campaign and really leveraging AI Max to see if it can find out new search terms for you. Now if I was to give you a really really quick short yes or no as to whether it's right for your business Obviously, I can't go into every single business, but in terms of business types, I'd say IO Max is very much going to be better suited right now for e-commerce brands or service-based or SaaS companies that are really dealing in business to consumer. So I would still have a lot of hesitancy about using AI Max in a business-to-business -business setting or if you're also in a niche where you're offering a more of a premium style product where you've got you know high traffic volume but you're only targeting a certain subset of that market because of the price point and it's in that situations where I still don't think AI Max would be beneficial for you but as I said especially if you're an e-commerce brand working in a high volume area you know AI Max could actually be a really really powerful tool for you but as I said I would separate it out into a separate search campaign so you're not undermining your current search and shopping performance so when it comes to the power pack I guess my verdict here is that I'm very very pro it and I think it is a model that I'm already using but what I would just say is that I would very much segment it out so once again by not forgetting about that bottom of the funnel so that high intent search traffic now we do know that search trends are changing. And one of the main reasons for why Google has introduced AI Max is because when they're talking about keyword list targeting, because how can you create a keyword list when we're dealing in a world of conversational and voice search? So people may not be searching blue shorts anymore. They may be doing a more of a conversational search like, you know, what is the best color shorts to be wearing on a European holiday? So that's where the power of these AI generated type targeting tools really, really take into effect but we're still very much seeing that the businesses which are seeing the best success with these new AI generated campaigns are ones that have a really strong bottom of the funnel and they're really owning that high intent keyword marketing space. So if you are looking at engaging what Google calls its power pack, as I said, I'm all for it as long as it's done in the right way. And what I've said before is that you need to make sure that before you go down that other path, you are doing it in a way that you're still targeting that bottom of the funnel and you're also not allowing the new AI campaigns to overtake that bottom of the funnel. So really make sure that you are segmenting it out and you've really got a real clear strategy for how those campaigns are gonna to work together. All right, so we've spoken about the power pack. Now let's talk about video campaigns and demand gen. Now there's quite a bit to go on through here. The one thing that I will say is that especially for e-commerce brands, I really think now is the time that if you're not already investing in YouTube and video ads, you need to be doing that like yesterday. So pretty much as soon as possible. For lead gen businesses to very much in the local service-based industry, I think I still think you could get away with it. But what I would be saying is that you need to start incorporating video pretty quickly. For SaaS companies, I would say that once again, you need to be incorporating video pretty much straight away. And the reason for why this is so powerful, and this is where I think Google has released some of the most important stats. And when they speak about YouTube and especially YouTube Shorts, is that 45% of all YouTube Shorts viewers are not actually on TikTok. And 65% of YouTube Shorts viewers are not on Instagram or on Reels. So there's some really, really powerful metrics there that you really, really need to really look at that YouTube is quite a unique audience and it needs to be targeted individually. Especially if you're an e-commerce brand, most e-commerce brands wouldn't dream of doing any marketing without using Instagram or TikTok. For me, YouTube is now a non-negotiable. You really need to be on that platform. Now, at the start of Google Marketing Live, they also did roll out some extra data around this and really looked at that it was two thirds of all new e-commerce purchases. So people who had discovered a new product, over two thirds of them, I think it was like 65%, they had involvement with YouTube and Google search. And then what was also really, really key is that if someone did discover on a social platform, the review or the, I guess the qualifying metrics was done on Google search. So 
Google search and YouTube is a really, really powerful tool that you need to be involved in. Now, as I said at the top of this video, I've got a separate video which I've already released about demand gen, but one of the things I did really, really want to just highlight on is that I've been on the record saying that when demand gen launched, I wasn't the biggest fan, but now it's becoming a core part of my campaign ecosystem that I'm recommending for all different types of businesses. And it really comes down to the ability that you can target different placements. So you can have a short only campaign or you could have an in-stream only campaign. And then you can also target different audiences. So it's a really, really powerful tool that you can use. Now, there are two extra things that I wanna speak about when it comes to demand gen. Once again, I don't just wanna rehash what I've spoken about in previous videos. And that is that Google is rolling out another two updates inside of demand gen. Now, these aren't live, so I can't show you what they look like inside of the account. The first one is extra exclusions when it comes to setting up your demand gen campaign. Very soon, you'll be able to explicitly exclude as part of the setup process you can kind of do it now in audience segments but it is a little bit tricky to do and we're not hundred percent guaranteed the effectiveness of it but as part of the campaign setup you'll be able to exclude people who have been on your website you better exclude your current customer lists you'll even be able to exclude people that have already interacted with your YouTube channel so this is going to be a really great tool where you can even start segmenting out your different types of demand gen campaigns where you could have one that is explicitly for prospecting and then another one which is for remarketing and the power of that is that you can really have different messaging so that you, if you're talking to someone who's on a brand discovery or hasn't heard of your product before, you wanna have, obviously give them a different type of message to what you are for someone who knows you and has already interacted with your business or your brand. And then the other one is, it's actually not a change to demand gen, but it's actually gonna be a new metric which you're gonna get inside of your Google Ads campaign. And that's what it's called attributed brand searches. Now, this really comes back to the, I guess the updated buying cycle of what people are going through. And if you just think about it with yourself if you see a new brand whether that's on Instagram or whether it's on YouTube and you've never seen this product or never seen this brand before the first place you're generally going to go to is you're going to go through and complete a Google search for that brand and that's what this is going to track it's going to track if someone saw or interacted with your YouTube video and then completed a brand search and that's really going to be a powerful metric to really start to educate business owners and also marketers like myself as to what the effect of these video campaigns and video ads are having in terms of the branded search. Many businesses, quite rightly, don't wanna be spending too much on branded search, but if you can start to communicate to them that the reason why you're seeing a 20% increase in your branded search terms is because we added a 5% extra budget in YouTube. It becomes a really, really powerful story. So that's the current updates in Google Marketing Live. As I said, I didn't wanna just go through and do a repeat of Google Marketing Live. I really wanna start talking about how this affects you, the business owner, or you, the Google marketer. So I'd love to know your thoughts. If you wanna leave any questions or what you thought about Google Marketing Live or how this affects your business, just drop it in the comments below. And as I said, at the top of this video, if you wanna find out some more information about AI Max, I want you to go through and watch this video right here. Or if you want to see more about the Performance Max placement reporting, I want you to go through and watch this video right here. Thanks for joining me. My name is Aaron Young from Define Digital Academy. I will be releasing some further videos as some extra things come live, especially about Google's Creator Studio, but I won't release that till it becomes live. So if you want to stay up to date, make sure that you don't need to subscribe, but you turn on that notification bell. Thanks again. See ya.